Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be talking about how to make an interactive PDF that has check marks in it. So first we'll create the design in Adobe InDesign and then we'll export it to be a PDF and then that way you can use interactive check marks and we're going to also make sure that it's accessible for other people, which only takes a couple of things to make sure it's accessible, including for a screen reader. So I'm going to share my screen with you now and we're going to go step by step. Now in here I have a to-do list of the things you need to do to create an accessible form field. So we're going to create check boxes for these items. So I'm first going to go in here to the shape tool and I'm going to take a rectangle. I'm going to draw out. So I'm going to make a square and for the design of it I'm just going to do a black outline so that way people can see where the box is and you can design this however you want it to look. For me personally, this is just the vibe I'm going for. Super simple, straightforward. I feel like this box is a little too big. So let's go ahead and size that down. Okay, so now we need to create all the other check boxes. Okay, so one option is to get all the shapes in here and we can select them all at the same time and make them all buttons at the same time. Now the downside of doing it this way is the settings won't be copied over when we're doing it this way and we'll have to fix the information for all of them. So the faster way would be if we take this checkbox, we create it into a checkbox and get it in the settings that we want for this one, then it would be way faster to just copy and paste it. So this by default is what the checkbox will look like, sorry, the check mark. And you can see over here in appearances, when the check mark is selected, it's on, it will look like this. When the check box is empty or off, this is what it will look like. And it, will, it shows you a little icon here or a preview of what it looks like. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave mine to the default, but feel free to click inside of it and then change it how you want with the pen tool or you can even paste into and make the appearance change that way. So for the name, I'm gonna go ahead and just name it checkbox one. You can name this whatever you want. The name is mostly just for you. The user isn't gonna see the name anywhere. It's just for your organization. So whatever you think is best, do that. And then you can pick the event. So this is just like how people are interacting with it. So the default is on release or tap. That's what I'm going to go ahead and keep with. Usually that's what I use for a checkbox, but feel free to play around with these other events to see what you think is best. And then there's actions. So we have a whole list here of actions that you can select to go with when someone clicks this checkbox. So you can have it go to a specific page. You can have it go to a URL. You could even have the button disappear after someone checks it off. That's kind of interesting. You can use sound or video when someone checks something off. That could be fun. There's so many different things in here that I've never actually honestly played with, but I think now that I'm reminded that these are here, they could come really in handy, like submitting a form or printing a form, um, opening a certain file or going to a certain place. So yeah, that's just optional if you wanna do something like that. Now what we're really gonna look at is this PDF options. This is what the screen reader is going to use to tell the user information, especially the description and the button value. So for me, for this checkbox, I just want to put in this information that says convert to checkbox for this first one because that is what they're checking off. That way someone will know what exactly they're checking off. And then for the button value, the default is yes. I'm going to go ahead and put complete instead of yes. That way it will tell them if it's complete and it just makes more sense. This you can put in whatever you want, but make sure that it would make sense to your user. And then I'm gonna leave on printable and then leave read only required and selected by default as not selected. Now you can use those if you want to. I personally just don't see a need to in this situation. So now we have our first checkbox and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take it and you can copy it and now you can see that I have a second checkbox. Now it has all the same settings, which is helpful. And it renamed it just with the next number because this one started as 10. So I'd probably just change this to two. And then I would take assign a name, copy and paste that. 
and put that in the description because you're going to want a different description for every single checkbox that you have so that a it matches what it's actually doing and b it doesn't confuse a screen reader user because if it said the same description for all of them it really would not make sense so it's super important to make sure that you have a distinguished unique description for all of your forms so I'm just going to go ahead and go through and make a checkbox for all of these and then I'll check in after Okay, so now I have all my check marks in here. I have all the settings how I want them. So the only thing that I'm gonna double check before I export this file is the tab order. So in the document, someone can click tab and go from form to form. And if you don't make sure that it's in the right order, then it could cause issues because it would jump from form filled to form filled all over the document and it's just confusing to the user. So to set the tab order, we're gonna go to object we're going to scroll down and go to interactive and then set tab order. So in here, it's going to show the names that I assigned to the checkboxes, which is why I just like doing straightforward numbers because then I know exactly what order I want them to be in. So I want it to be number one checkbox first, two, three, four, five, six. So they are showing them in order right now. But if you were to have put them in a different order, then you can move them around. So I can take this six one and move it up and you can see the line and it will move it to wherever you put it. You can also select one and then click move up or move down, whichever way you prefer. Typically when you're putting these check boxes in your document, the order that you copy and paste them or add them is the order that they're going to be automatically set in for the tab order. So that's something to keep in mind of a more efficient way to set up your files is to do it in the order that you want them to be exported in. Now we're going to go to file and export. And so in here, we're going to get our file ready to export into Adobe Acrobat. So I just named my file to-do list with accessible check boxes. You can name it whatever you want. Pick the location you want it to exist in. In the format, you want to make sure you pick PDF interactive, not print. If you select print, your form fields will not show up in your document. So it's crucial to make sure you do interactive. Now I'm just going to click save. And then we have a dialog box. Now in here, you're just going to do normal things where you're going to pick like what pages do you want all or a specific range. But the important information for a PDF for forms is down here in options. It says forms and media include all. We want to select that. And then we're going to choose create tagged PDF as checked and use structure for tab order. Now this is what determines that what we just set up as our tab order is how it's going to appear in the PDF. These go into more depth in accessibility. So I'm not going to go over all of that in this video, but keep an eye out because I will be coming out with more videos to help with tagging and that type of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and export my document and it automatically is opening in Adobe Acrobat. So now I can see the file. It shows the form fields in blue. That way a user knows exactly where those form fields are which is super helpful. And then I can check it off or I can uncheck them. Now, something that's important that I don't remember if I mentioned or not, so I'll mention it real fast, is when you're in InDesign and assigning these, you really want to make sure that every checkbox is named differently because if they're not, you wouldn't be able to select all of them individually. It would treat them as one button. And usually that's more of how a radio button behaves and so by doing a checkbox, you're just going to want to make sure that they all have different names so they all behave as a separate button. Okay, back into Acrobat. So now that we have this all set up, it's great, it's working. I'm going to want to just make sure that everything's working. So if you look here at the tip, it says add the value because that's what I put for the description. Visibly, you're not going to see where it says complete, but it will read that with a screen reader. And so I'll usually go through and just like double check that all of these have what it's supposed to say to make sure that it's accurate. And then also beyond that, I'll start checking them all and just like making sure that they all work how I want them to. Now there will be occasions, this happens to everyone, where you've already done all the work in InDesign, you get it exported to Adobe Acrobat and you're like, shoot, I made a mistake or I just want to edit something real fast, but I don't want to have to re-export the whole document. And so in here you can go to the side panel to the all tools 
and you can find prepare a form. And in here, it will show me a list of all of the check boxes that I have here. I can double click on a specific checkbox and it will bring me essentially all the same information I put and a little bit more actually than I put in InDesign. So it has the name, the tool tip, is the same thing as the description. They're just kind of named differently in both of the platforms. And then you can also change it in here for some properties down here, like do you want it to be visible, hidden, that kind of thing. And then you can also change some appearance stuff in here. So say we made it black, but we decided at the last minute that we want them to be red instead, you could change it in here. So yeah, that's one option and you were really in a pension, you wanted to change it in here. I highly recommend though doing all of that kind of changing in your InDesign file, your native file, because then you'll have those edits when you go back later instead of it being different from your InDesign file. You can also play around with the position in here and then you can also convert it. Say you wanna change the shape of it or whatever, the style of it in here, you could also do that. So. Yeah, this is kind of just the general way of getting in here to change exactly how you want it to be if you're trying to do it inside of Acrobat instead of InDesign. Over here in this panel, you're just gonna be able to click on these over here and it will go exactly to where it is. So you can see over here, it doesn't exactly show the whole title. So this way I can just go by the name of it if I want to. You can also sort by different ways. So here the default is order tabs by structure. So that's because when we exported it in design, that's what we had selected. You can also change it in here if you want it to be like a different way of determining the tab order. You can also switch it up and make it alphabetical order if you wanted them to do it that way. And then there's just some further options in this menu that you can play around if they're helpful to you. But the last thing that I wanted to do to show you this is to just show how the tabbing order works. So I'm gonna just click tab on my keyboard and notice how it showed the first one highlighted. I can push enter if I want to check it or uncheck it. And then when I tab, it will go to the next one. So this is just really helping with people who are using their keyboard only to be able to interact with these forms and make it more efficient to them. So I wanna go back, I can tab there and then push enter to uncheck that. So it really just makes it so that it's seamless for the user and this way you don't have to actually look at it very much, especially if you're using a screen reader who will read it to you. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel below if you wanna see more videos like this one and go ahead and watch this video next. I hope that you all have a fantastic week. Bye.